I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 seasons. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any Brasher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. Center wing, bad luck then to Richmond. Here's a chance, Broderick, very good with the handball. On to Nash, oh, clever little chip pass. Richmond opened the season with a first round Foster's Cup clash against St Kilda on a balmy February evening at Waverley. While the weather may not have been ideal for football, what unfolded was one of the most memorable chapters in Foster's Cup history. After the Saints threatened to blow the young Richmond side away in the first half, the Tigers fought back go into the main change trailing by just four points he goes for a bounce he can take it for another couple too up towards the 50 Winmar peels off and approaches him he drives it long and high Richardson well, here's Dundas trying to that was Maxfield presses his way through the pack off the ground towards four but again Shanahan playing in front oh smothered off the boot that's good play by Herneman hand pass over the top Richardson open goal another one of the Tigers great play Here's a chance for Maxfield. He trapped that very, very well. That oh, beautiful hand pass over to Richardson again. A great team play again by the Tigers. Harvey socks down. I think his older brother would be pretty pleased with the way he's going. Here go the Tigers again. Campbell going for a bounce. He's up the centre half forward. Nobody coming towards him. Another easy goal for Richardson. Now it's Gale this time. Well, the hand passing has set up goals. Slight fumble allows the. Uh, the Kilda players in with it, Broderick to Dundas. Dundas had open goal and Matty Dundas puts it through. Bit of a can deer. Deer doing very, very well. Bond gets it to Maxfield. The racehorse is off. He's going to bomb it in long, in towards full forward, hoping for one of the high flies. Gale couldn't mark. Chance for Richardson on the left foot. He puts it through. Another one to the Tigers. Can he thread this one through from the boundary line? Look at beautiful kicking style. Kicks right through that ball. Oh, what a kick. Recruited from Fitzroy. Now, free. Reads it beautifully off the back. He can run another 40 metres if he wants to. He should keep going and run right in. Keep going, Tony Free. He races in. What's he doing? He sets out for goal. It swings. And it's a mark for Richardson. Great play by the Tigers. Turner's in the ruck now with Deer on the bench. Oh, oh. dances his way past to Free. Kick by Tony Free. This is 35 metres out. Winmar perhaps should have taken the market. Comes off to Nash. His hand pass to Richardson. Another one. Six goals to Richardson. The second half saw the lead change continually. When Lockett booted his fifth late in the final term, the Saints led by six points. At a second round berth, Beckham. Beat him. How do you beat this man? Good hand pass there. Hurried kick out of defence by Francis. Saints by six points. Under two minutes left. Knocked forward by Grant. Taken once again by Rogers. Another chance for the Tigers. Richardson on the 50. He's got men going past every 
everywhere. He gives the pass off and Herneman marks. 20 metres from goal and a straight kick will level the scores and we could have time on or extra time here. Wayne Herneman's mark and goal with just over a minute remaining levelled the scores at 14-12-96. Mass confusion reigned when the siren sounded. For the first time under modified night rules, the game would go into extra time. And Shanahan, Dundas, oh, did it well, Matty Dundas. Puts a goal. Oh, I think he's kicked this. Great goal. But the Tigers didn't panic. Their defence was relentless, holding St Kilda scoreless to eventually run out 22-point winners. The star of the show was Matthew Richardson, who finished with eight goals. The Richmond player, Daffy. Oh, goal! That's a goal to Richmond. Richardson. Well, it'll be some effort for St Kilda to get back from here. They have it in the middle, but it's a Richmond free kick for Tony Free. The Tigers lead by 14 points. St Kilda led by four at quarter time and by four at half time. Towards full forward. A mark to Richardson. Well, this is for goal number eight. And it looks like being a match winning performance at the moment. Distance 45 metres. He's kicked it. The St Kilda win set up another Monday night clash at Waverley with arch rivals Collingwood. 26,000 saw Collingwood hit the ground running, none more damaging than 1993 Norwich Rising star Nathan Buckley. Buckley booted two fine goals as Collingwood piled on nine in the first term. Go to the first change with a 52-point advantage. Hassel across the side, they've got plenty of eyes, made a big mistake here as Knights hand pass to Edwards. Richmond score a goal. Then, in a form reversal, Richmond lifted in the second turn. But inaccuracies would prove costly. They finished the quarter kicking three goals seven. Went to the main change, still 34 points in arrears. Play on. Richmond with the chance. Broderick out wide. Knight swings around. Too far out to goal. Thumps it in towards full forward. Richardson gets underneath the front spot. Oh, great mark. That was outstanding. Edwards with a chance, attacking it very hard. Knights in the pocket, running out of room, could kick a goal. Snaps, kicks the captain's goal to start the second half. After a great goal in the third term, Matthew Knights hobbled from the ground with a strained lateral ligament. And from there, Collingwood ran away to a 49-point win and a place in the semi-final. Matthew Richardson again displayed promise with four goals, while Wayne Campbell and Tony Free battled hard throughout. Richardson, Richardson goes for goal, and I think he might get a free kick here. Is it a goal? All clear. It is a goal. Good boy. Yeah, they did have a big first quarter. I remember that one, actually. It was fairly hectic, torrid affair early. Um, we weren't quite on the pace, I don't think, and we didn't have very good... Uh, very many good players at all that evening, and, um, you know, they were a bit too good for us on the night. Richmond's first assignment for the 1994 home and away season was a tough one. A trip to the Western Oval at the best of times isn't easy. And Richmond was a new look combination, with eight players selected to play their first game in the yellow and black. The new side didn't gel early, with Footscray skipping away to a lead by 29 points at half-time. The second half was a vastly different story. Led by ace ball-getter Paul Broderick and Matthew Richardson, the Tigers fought back kicking 13 goals to seven in the second half. Richardson finished the game with eight, but it wasn't enough, and the Tigers went down in a thriller by just two points. You know, we didn't play that well, I don't think, in the first half, especially a lot of the smaller guys around the ball. And, um, you know, we came home in a bit of a hurry, but just didn't quite get there. I think we, what, we lose by a couple of points or a yeah. point or something or other. Like had a lot of injuries too before that game. Quite a few players were brought back in, about mm. five, I think, that hadn't been able to play before. Well, the play 
play goes on. It's Michael Gale's kick up towards full forward. It's picked off by Francis. A quick kick by that player to the goal square. Richardson's got it. He's surely going to be too tall and too mobile for Scott McIver. Brisbane match. may have been successful in their last run-in with the Tigers at Carrara in round 17 of 1993. But this time the venue was the MCG. And Richmond were confident they could break the club's losing streak of 11 matches. That was from Rogers. They did just that, leading at every change and claiming the four points in grand style, winning by 62 points. Oh, great kick! And a goal! It's been marked by Bond. Bond is still in the defensive half of the ground for the Tigers. His kick goes in near the centre and a terrific mark taken by Brendan Gale. Brendan Gale filled the Tiger problem area of centre-half forward, pulling down 12 marks in a best-on-ground performance. Skipper Tony Free had 22 kicks, and former Woodville West Torrens utility Matthew Rogers made a big impression kicking four goals. He gets onto that left foot and kicks it in the Richardson direction. Punched away by McIver, but Richardson's recovery was brilliant, and he gets the goal in second. He get, tries to gather it again, but Nash was terrific in that contest. Away to Maxfield. A very good kick by Maxfield. Taken by Campbell, and he kicks the goal. Fed clear by Broderick. Dion Scott gets the handball clear. Michael Gale is there for Richmond. A little bit difficult to get used to that. Usually Michael Gale for Fitzroy, but uh, crossed over to the Tigers in the summer with two or three of his mates. There's Brendan Gale, the brother. Nash loves to run with the footy. Watch this. To give the handball off, really. Now he'll go for goal. And he'll put it through for a goal. Knights punches it back to midfield. Almost as good as a kick. Now Elliott gives it over to Gale. It originally came from Roderick. Gale again. Under Campbell. Richardson at the back. Yes! Great mark. He plays on. That was the wrong thing to do. They should still get a goal. They have. It was Rogers again who snapped it. No mark taken. Gale is there. Those Richmond half-backs and full-backs have mopped up beautifully all day long and created uh, attacks from defence. Kick off the ground by Free was good. Maxfield could run onto this. Goes into a goal. No. Handball. But Rogers gets the goal. Terrific play. Tigers. Third goal, Rogers. Best games we've seen him play. Oh, <laughs> shocking kick. Oh, keep quiet. Here's Maxfield again. He'll kick a goal from there. Oh, terrific kick. It's a better kick. Scott at the back. Couldn't take it. Oh, can he kick number four? Rogers, he has. Well, real goals, Nick. They used that phrase in the third quarter. Taken away for the Tigers again by Nash. Got the handball away to Campbell. Ooh. Campbell has the football on centre wing. A free kick, but at the advantages with the Tigers. And Richardson marks at the back of champion. Richardson again was on target, finishing with seven. Not only taking the youngster to 15 for the season, but also to the top of the goal-kicking table. One clear of Adelaide's Tony Modra. Five. Caught is Richardson. Got the handball away. Kick forward. Chopped off by Daryl White. Tried to kick it to his own advantage. In there is Nash, handball. Maxfield, unselfish. Richardson could go in and get the goal anyway. Brilliant thinking, brilliant. You'd think that he looks like he's going to be a, 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 most probably a centre-half forward. Uh, he likes the room. His last quarter at the end of the year was very, very dynamic. Uh, but I think he's going to be an outstanding player. He's naturally, everybody talks about his kicking, but an interesting stat was provided just recently that if you take the number of goals and points that he's uh, kicked, his ratio isn't very much different to some of the people that we're revering that have kicked 100 goals. Good kick distance-wise. Heady waits at the back. Comes to Turley over the top. Matera, danger signs here for Richmond. Round three saw Richmond position, so receive a visit from the West Coast Eagles in front of 19,000 fans at the MCG. Richmond made no change to their lineup, going into the match in fourth place on the Premiership ladder. And one of nine sides, including the Eagles, with a one and one record. Here comes Francis uncontested. Promising young player, this guy. 
There's Richardson up ahead. And Francis will kick from just outside the 50. A chance to level the scores. Good looking effort. McIntosh goes back. Can't reach it. Goal. But Gale is favoured by the kick. Almost the juggle mile. Oh. Could have almost been paid that one, I would have thought. Gale comes away with it, nevertheless. Feeds it across to support. This is Broderick. Centering kick should have been better. It comes to Knights on the bounce. Did beautifully, Knights. Runs inside the 50. He'll kick this. Long kick. Good Richard. kick. Richmond never looked threatening, as the Eagles did as they pleased, kicking 2015 to 5 9 to run out 96 point victors. Peter Sumich booted five for the winners, while for the Tigers it was hard to find a good player over four quarters. Although Chris Bond and Paul Broderick battled hard. goes Goldwood. Is it another one for the West Coast Eagles? I think it is. Golden material. Trying to see Sawing between. Half back and half forward, and now Bullis from South Australian has the mark. Well, kick from inside the centre square goes long. Richardson going back with McIntosh, and it's a goal. Um, Broderick and Bond both had fantastic years as a whole, and um, you know great leadership qualities as well. I think which was important to the club. You know, early on in the season, um, we probably lacked that a little bit past seasons, and. Um, Players like that who came from different clubs, you know, really added a spark in that leadership area, I think. Dundas gets it away to Broderick. Broderick, sweeping hand pass. Standing still, there was Campbell. Kick into the pocket. Matthew Richardson trying to do something with it before he really gathered it. Then he gave the hand pass away to Knights. Knights, discipline, kick to the front of the square. Good play, Tigers. The Tigers had won their last three encounters with the Swans by an average margin of five goals. So they headed to the SCG with high expectations. The press were left bewildered by the selection committee's decision to make no change to the lineup. It was embarrassed by the Eagles six days earlier. Philandia goes for goal, and he's put it through. Peter Philandia happy. Richmond got out to an early three-goal lead, but the Swans fought back to go to the main change with a 12-point advantage. Broderick, usually a very good kick, and this is no exception. It's a goal. Big ball here for Sydney. Probably their last chance to score in the first half. Francis well played, hurled them up, went back towards half forward. Maxfield thumps it on. Caven looked for a free kick. Richardson's left hand handball, okay. Chance here for Rogers has got one. Geez, Richmond, two goals in the last minute of the first half. Waters, Wheeler. Oh, handball missing the mark. Elliott, handball to Broderick. Broderick sweeps one to Gale. Gale can go over the top does now and Richardson gets his first for the night. After trailing by one point at three quarter time the Tigers put in possibly their most disappointing quarter of the season to go down by 14 points. Could you miss this? Oh, I think you know he may have got it. West Coast are a very difficult side but we didn't play well. You know, you expect at least to be competitive but um, the Sydney game was seen as very important and one that we should win and I think when you lose those sorts of games then you know, the disappointment does rise all around the club. The following day, marketing consultant and former player Mal Brown launched a singing attack on club committee members. It's something that had been given a fair bit of thought, but after losing to the West Coast Eagles, which in the previous uh, um, history since they've been formed, I think their biggest loss was 40, 53 points, I think. Mm. And that was a very down day because we did expect... Uh, the board, the players, the coach, the members, with the recruits we'd got, Broderick was about the third highest possession getter the year before for Fitzroy. Uh, Michael Gale was held in high regard. Uh, Deer was uh, a player that we thought would give us someone we'd never had for a few years. Tapin particularly was a boy that had played in the grand final in uh, South Australia and had good credentials. And then Rogers was a bit of a bonus. He came up quicker. And I think most people ex and expected us to perform. And, um, I just felt that it's very easy. Richmond had some eight coaches in 14 years. Uh, it's very easy to blame the coach. It's very easy to blame the players, and they have to take the ultimate responsibility. But at the end of the day, the members of the Richmond Football Club had been worse performers than the players ever had been because they'd never had an election for some eight years. So if you don't create change, and people are there all a long period of time, and apathy comes in and after that Eagles game we went upstairs and 
uh, there were certain people that had been drinking and hadn't even come out after half time. Now I could understand that if I'd been watching this for six or eight years, I'd have been the same way. But I don't think that really did anything for uh, demanding from our players and our coaches and our marketing managers and our general managers that this is an intolerable situation and you have to become accountable. And that's basically what um, was, was, was put out. You know, think we were sitting here at board tables in this room talking about things like whether, player, uh, whether the staff had a, an extra day's holiday after Easter uh, and you lost 40 members and they'd worked all Sunday, but we never really were talking about the issues of uh, what are we going to do to make our players more accountable, our coaching staff more accountable, our football department, our marketing, our accounting. I mean, I just thought we were just wandering along as a, a, ge a wandering generality with no specific purpose. And we'd lost, in good Australian language, we'd lost a bit of shit in the system. As a result, General Manager Cameron Schwab resigned and in a boardroom reshuffle, four directors were sacked. But how did the boardroom activity affect the players? I think it probably brought the players together. I mean, there's always an effect. I mean, it's, it was all over the media and, you know, that was the talk of the town through a period of a week or a, a week or two. So players naturally talk together and um, get a feeling on what's happening. But, um, I mean, I agree with Mel. I think it was, you know, the issue was kept fairly separate from the football department in a way, other than just naturally what the media does in terms of passing on information. But I really saw it as maybe a catalyst for self-assessment. I think everyone sort of sees, right, we've got a problem here, and they maybe look at themselves a little bit and try and work out, you know, what they can do to pick up their game, and I'm sure, I'm sure I did, and I assume that most other players did as well. So I think that was, the, you know, the important thing from a playing point of view, that, you know, what was happening at board level, it did sort of filter through, and um, obviously at board level there was a lot of self-assessment going on, and I think it did filter through to the players. I don't know if it was the total reason for us playing, you know, better football and being more successful, but it certainly, you know, had a part in it, I think. So this man's a mean customer too. He's down there in cohorts. That's James oh! Shannon. Did he take it? No. Roderick. Oh, Winmar's got a huge leap. Now here's Turner again. And did that clear the line? More than 37,000 fans made the trip to Waverley Park to see the 12th place Tigers take on 14th place St Kilda in round five. Richmond, after a week in the headlines, led at every change, running out comfortable winners by 42 points. So, here he comes, right on the boundary again. Oh, don't tell me he's done it again. What a great goal. Paul Broderick again supplied good drive, and skipper Tony Free led by example. In an important day for the club, he booted three. Almost got there, Grant Gale's left hand handball of beauty. Maxwell to kick a goal. An excellent start for the Tigers. Awesome, good football there. Wakeland ripped off it by Gale. The other Gale comes in, Michael. Now Broderick has had a good match. Turner improvised quite cleverly, got it out wide. Chance for Howard. Got a bit of an opportunity now to go long to the goal square. Well done, Frawley. Getting back with Tony Free to the open goal, and it's another one. Now, how will the umpire see that? He's calling play on probably a good decision in the end. The St Kilda player is Gale down there. Peter Gale. Richard I'd say Gale is in the square. Now, Campbell to Knights. Matthew Knights, he loves to spin around, and he finds Rogers. Rogers will race under the left foot. Brings it back in front of goal. It clears the pack. Here's Grant. He's shoved over. Now Tony Free. Oh, good, and the foot goes free. Oh, he's kicked a great goal. Bailey Orr had to take that, really. Knights, too slow. Took too long. Wakeland off the ground by Free. And a great mark by Richardson. No Turner, who's already kicked two. And Knights has hurt himself, I think. Is it his shoulder? Shoulder. His cheek. Shoulder by the look of it. Uh, Turner should be able to kick his third goal, and he's put it through. Pretty handy effort by Turner. Let's hope Knights can recover. He's fumbled a couple of marks, Bailey, that he should have held. Well, he went without it then, and he's free, getting it to the half forward line. And he's down behind the play, too. Now, Nash is on the ground, chips it across. It's no mark. 
Shaw. Too slow. Oh, gee, they're making some mistakes. Round the corner goes Rogers. I think he's kicked the goal, Matthew Rogers. He has. Oh, look at that for a mark by Tate. A ripper across the front of the pack. Great by a first year. On to Howard. John Howard straight up the middle. A long raking kick. Frawley at the back. Richardson at the front. Oh, he actually dropped that in the end. He's been paid the mark. Grant out to centre wing. Burke. Rodericks handball to Elliott. He struggled in this quarter. That's a better handle. Tony Fries will kick his third. Lines him up. Floats it through. It's another one. Oh, here's a chance for Broderick. Pickett's tackle wasn't quite strong enough. Maxfield will love this. Absolutely eat it up. Howard's got the speed to go on with it. Well played by John Howard. And Howard chips it out to Elliot. Good play. From centre wing. Sweeps out the handle to Greg Deer. Lopes away as he so often does. Or goes for a bounce. Over the top, OK. To Daffy. Daffy from 60 metres out. Good looking kick distance, Tony Free tries a one-hander, Benny Gale picks his second. No, and John's message always was, you know, to leave the boardroom side out of the road and um, just concentrate on our footy and, and obviously that's what he's going to say and that's what I'm going to say to the players. But, you know, I think we did see it as a, a really big day and something very important to the club and very important, you know, to the members and, and to the board themselves and, and everyone involved in the club. That it was a must-win situation and and the players played accordingly, I think. Nation is, kicks it in towards half forward. It goes over the top. The ball now in Fraser Brown's area. Good bump there by Maxfield. A chance now for Daffy. Daffy's kick. It's a goal to Richmond. After a bye in round six and a convincing 41-point win against Fitzroy at the Optus Oval, Richmond played host to Carlton in front of 50,000 at the MCG. And puts it through. Won't they love that? With Stephen Kernahan in fine touch up forward, Carlton put pay to any hopes of a winning hat-trick for the Tigers, and they booted 7-3 to 1-3 in the opening turn. Is that a throw? Hannah's handball to Mitchell. Mitchell's going to kick a goal. It's a beauty. Richmond never recovered and finally went down by 28 points. Free from Matthew Knight goes for goal and the captain's got it. Brendan Gale was the shining light, finishing with three. Goes to Elliott. Elliott's kick goes straight down towards the uh, goal face. Gatherers by Richardson, gets the handball. Nash, he'll mop this up. Chris Nash, goal Richmond. McKay goes back with the fly to the ball. Can't get rid of it. Nash was good in the contest. Richmond will get a goal. Mark it down. Chris Nash. It's kicked there by Brendan Gale. Yeah, I mean, he's always promised plenty, Benny, and, um, I mean, he'll be the first to say that he's been a little bit inconsistent over the past. And I still think he can improve, you know, a little bit more and become more and more consistent. He's, I mean, he's, he's a fantastic leader and he's a big fellow, a big, strong fellow, and, and you know, when he gets up there and takes a strong grab and um, lifts the teammates, it, it makes a real difference. And I think this year, yeah, he started, he started to turn the corner and, and become a bit more consistent, but I still think, you know, that he's got plenty more to offer as well. A high kick made for Barnes, just got underneath it a little bit. There was a whistle on play. The advantage is played to Richmond. And Rogers it is. A half forward. This is their first shot at goal. It's curling around. It's coming back beautifully. And he slots it through. Great kick. Richmond short. hadn't beaten Geelong in their last five clashes. And their round nine encounter at Cadenia Park was no different. Geelong were first out of the blocks going to the first change with a 30-point lead. Played once more, Couch kicks it his second, he's got it. Broderick, Maxfield, back to Broderick. Here's Nash, about 35 metres from goal, he settles, lines up and boots his second. Spot goes from behind, off hands, Ablett an opportunity. Ablett, some magic here, pulls it back, a oh, great goal. Oh, that was not really to the advantage of his side, Richardson. Get under the right foot, does beautifully read Neil. Almost could have gone on. Now he does, kicks it goal, and what's the umpire say? I think he's got it. He has. Darcy gets back quickly. Now Richards in a chance. Richmond having the numbers down there, gives it away quickly. This is Matty Dundas goes at goal. 
And he might have got that run through. I think he has. Or did it touch the post? No, it's all clear. Though the Tigers managed to add five goals in the second quarter, the Cats ran away with it in the second half. Ablett was again the star with eight, taking his career tally against Richmond to 104. Mench tips it inside the 50. Ablett shielding his opponent from the ball. So does Gary Ablett have the wood on Richmond? He has. There's a couple of forwards that have had the wood over Richmond though in recent years. Jason Dunstall, I think, has kicked his ton as well. But, um, no, I mean, he's a fantastic player, isn't he? But I think, you know, what was the main problem that game, I think, was around midfield and just the ease in which the ball was, was delivered down to Gary. And I think we played Duncan Callaway on him that day, who does play extremely tight. And, um, you know, you know if someone wins a kick against Duncan, then, you know, the problem's probably elsewhere, really, because we know how, how good a defender he is. So I think we really assessed what was happening around midfield and on the flanks and tried to really tighten up and become more accountable in those areas after that game. Campbell, rebound opportunity, Broderick did nicely. Buick went down, Broderick, Bond, Howard inside the 50, goes long, it's not a bad effort, it's a good kick, it's a goal. Following the bye in round 10, the Tigers ventured to Optus Oval to take on the reigning Premiers. Richardson in the reserves, kickers by Rogers, is that a mark? Yes it is, Nash. Heard, Deer from behind, a oh, great snap by Denham, has got the goal. Over the ball was McCurry going nowhere. Cockatoo Collins out of the congestion. Goal. As it bounced through, I think it has. Turner claims he touched it. No, says the goal umpire. Still he goes. Bond kicks to half forward. Murphy couldn't quite get there. Gale, he's already kicked one goal from a strong mark. Snapshot looks good and gets it. Great kick. Deer punches from Alessio. Nation Masiti. Nash is first to get there, long hand pass, let's see if Maxwell can finish this off, gets onto his left foot, turns around, that looks pretty good, it's better, it's coming back, just a little bit too far, I think he's missed again. No, he hasn't missed again, it's a goal! Dia, down towards half forward, and up comes Murphy, and that's a good grab. Yeah, that's a great grab. And he kicks from just inside the 50. Good looking effort, it's a goal. First goal in the AFL from a short run up to half forward. Snapshot for the Tigers by Justin Murphy as he kicked his third. He has. 18 year old Justin Ryan Murphy Gary was lively, keeping Richmond within contact Howard. until three quarter time. In the last term, the Dons reproduced that Premiership form, kicking nine goals to run out victors by 46 points. Another comfortable win for the opposition, but for the Tigers, it was all a part of team development. Watson's kick is good. The players had a really good feeling after that game and, and knew that things were starting to happen and that, um, you know, we're working on a formula of, of a style of game which we were trying to adhere to and I think we did most of that game and um, played very well against last year's Premiers and it was only the last ten minutes after Wanganeen's goal that they did, you know, kick on and, and win by a considerable margin. But from that point in time, I think history will show that we played very well and, um, you know, the, the style of game we were using was very good. Good effort there by Maxfield. Handball away under pressure. Francis and runs it out of play. Ooh, look at that. It's on. Francis ducked into the fence. With just three wins from ten outings, Richmond went into their round 12 clash with Collingwood sitting in 12th position on the ladder. But still three games from eighth position occupied by the Magpies. 61,000 turned up at the MCG to see the traditional rivals do battle. And it was the Tigers who started best, sneaking away to a four-goal lead at the main change. Got back and delivered the hand pass to Shaw. Shaw in the middle of the ground. Kick was smothered off the boot. Rebounds now to James. James kick for goal. Collingwood's done well here. They've got it about 40 metres further away from the goal. There's Tony Fries, left footer. Nash and Hassel. Nash a beauty. He is a very good mark. Minute to go to quarter time. Nash from 30 metres out. Kicks a goal. 55 metres out. Rocker provides a lead. Monkhorst then goes to the goal square. James Maxfield. Rocker, big fly, big grab. He's got it. Broderick has a bit of a look and kicks it 
out near the wing. Well done by Bauer. Lovely little hand pass finds Matthew Knight doing some good running. In towards the forward line and the mark has been taken by Miranda. Miranda is at uh, left half forward. He kicks in towards centre half forward. Excellent mark. Good jump. Well judged. And Rogers has taken it. I know he's getting plenty of touches, but he's not covering the ground. Well, important kick for Rogers personally. And it looks as though it's pretty good. To goal. Well done by Gale. To Daffy. Daffy to the goal square. Mark to Murphy. That's better. That's what we saw last week. Jeez. Sanderson. Handball. Bit slow. Turner's having a very good game. Free kick to Rogers, surely not paid, doesn't matter. Nash gets very good distance to half forward. Gale and Christian, bouncing ball. Watson, Gale, can he knock it forward? Can he knock it on again? Neil, Daffy should kick a goal. He has. Well, John Northey looking <laughs> still as those great concerns. Brendan Gale just got his foot to it, enough to carry to Tony Free. Freeze kick towards full foot. Richmond mark, Neil. Well, that was always going to be a problem for Collingwood because Neil's on a midget. Murphy's too far out to score, but he'll certainly get it to within distance. No mark. Nash off the ground. It's going to roll through for a goal. Nash, well done. Broderick with the bounce. He's 70 metres out. Tries a long one. Krasiska, bad bounce. Gale gets rid of a couple. Chance now. Rogers is going to kick a goal. That's it. Shut the gate. Tony Free and Paul Broderick were damaging with 28 possessions apiece as the Richmond side cut loose in the second half to run out winners by 64 points and restricting Collingwood to just four majors for the afternoon. Forward again. Campbell's short kick. The mark has been taken by Neil once again. Can he keep the perfect record? Oh, gee, it's not a bad kick. It's a beautiful kick. It's a goal. The kick forward was by Miranda. Kerrison tackled by Bauer. Away goes Neil. Neil, the shot for goal. Goes across the face. Oh. Rogers. Oh, Bauer yeah. stopped it. Miranda's kicked the goal. You wouldn't believe it. If you had another look at that, you couldn't possibly believe it. Yeah, I mean, that just lifted the club no end. I mean, old rivals, Collingwood against Richmond, you've got a big crowd. You know, we probably didn't know how some of the younger guys would go again, you know, in front of such a large crowd with the pressure on and, and the spotlight on them. But everyone played very well. And, um, you know, everyone was accountable, especially around midfield, I think, that day. And, um, you know, it was a great win for us, wasn't it, Mal? Fantastic. <laughs> Here's an opportunity for Rogers, about 60 metres out. Now it gets back to about 52 metres out. Nash dropped it. Opportunity for Murphy, back to goal. Feeds it wide, taken by Bond. Bond goes from 30 and kicks a goal. You wouldn't read about it. The MCG was the venue for round 13. Richmond, sitting in 10th place, took on second place, North Melbourne. Surely North Melbourne's first up. 26,000 braved blustery conditions and witnessed a goalless first quarter. Only the 14th in the last and, uh, 50 years. The position to be with those hurry kicks out of the pack. He kicks north first. Towards the pocket it bounces. Schwarz tracking it down there. Clever hand pass. Socket across by Campbell for a goal. Campbell and Longmire are there. Campbell, can he make it three? He does. Great snap shot. Four and it goes from north. As the kick goes towards the outer side, up goes Deere, it falls behind, this is Bond, running it through half forward, Bond has a second bounce, looks up now, pulls it down towards full forward, Laidley will need to go, he can't get there in time, and Nash takes a very good grab in front. Great courageous mark there from uh, Chris Nash. 18 goals for the season, his best hauls have been three bags of three against Footscray, Fitzroy and Geelong. The Tigers get their second. Following an even first half, the Tigers began to dominate the midfield. But despite having 10 scoring shots to three in the third quarter, inaccuracy plagued the forwards, and they went to the last change holding sway by 10 points. Crocker 
He flew, so did about half a dozen others behind Campbell. Open goal, he gets his fourth. He sees Nay, she has to wait, and as a result, Mann gets back, takes the mark, plays on to Laidley. Laidley has been quite effective in the third quarter. Terrific intercept. And the snaps on his there. Storming up to meet the ball was King, couldn't control it. How tackled by King and slung. Maxfield runs onto the ball just inside the 50. Can go, sees Nash. Nash 20 metres out. Great play by Maxfield. And Maxfield's been very good in this uh, third quarter for the Tigers. I think he heard he was clear because the crowd roared. Nash gets his second. With North Melbourne desperate to continue a seven-game streak, they threw everything at Richmond. But through desperation from Matthew Knights and the pacey Chris Bond, they managed to stem the tide to win by a slender five points. The other one was worth 50. I think that one's worth 50 also. Nice. Goes Goldwood. Gets it. Blakey from midfield. The former Fitzroy start down towards full forward again. Oh, Gale missed what he should have taken. But Kernan to Allison might make them pay. He does. That's a goal. Lucky's game. Well, the endeavour's been there. Let's see what Longmire can do. The former Coleman medalist. A left foot snap. Looks pretty good. He's got a goal. Oh. A goal would seal it for a very low-scoring affair here. Deer over the top. Couldn't get a decisive tap. Roderick takes it. Tackled by Stevens. Maxfield. Kicked a beautiful goal just before half-time. Centering kick. Go! So he's due for one to keep the average right. He hasn't scored today. In the gloom. Kicks and goals. It was a real battle, that one. And I mean, yeah, I mean, you talk about each of these being important, but I think any win's important, isn't it? Especially, you know, the situation our club was in over the past few years. We just needed to rack them up, you know, as continuously as we could. But, um, yeah, Nash was good that day. Bondi was good. Bondi had a, a fantastic year, really. Often got the job of negating, you know, the, op the opposition's best running player and did it very effectively. As the ball is in the middle, and it's Jim Steins who gets the first effective kick away. Down towards the half-forward line. Oh, oh, Melbourne Lions going to run into an open goal in the first 20 seconds. After two and wins in a row against sides higher on the ladder, Richmond sitting in ninth spot at 11th placed Melbourne at the MCG. In front of more than 32,000 fans, Melbourne got off to a good start, taking a 13-point lead at half-time. Tingay does the roaming work and has a snap. He's got it. What a goal. Thank you, Doc. From the throw-in, Bauer in trouble. It's a hurried kick. And there's little distance, but Gale takes them up. There he is, directly in front. Big hips, narrow shoulders. <laughs> Gale's kick. Brendan Gale. One kick, one goal. Oh, that's true. This is a good game of footy. Just on six minutes remaining. Love it. From centre wing. Here comes Jakovic. Almost taken high. Tingay tries to get clear. Sweeps a long hand pass. This should result in a goal to Melbourne. Running into the open goal. And there is a very handy one indeed for the Tigers kick by David Schwartz. Jack gave Melbourne the ascendancy as Matthew Rogers. Three late goals. In fact, as the kick will land up in the square. Richardson, yes! Did he hold it? Yes! The umpire has paid it right in the square. And the youngster, Matthew Richardson, not unlike Ablitz. They're in similar. Richardson directly in front. He's kicked the goal. For Yates to go over the top to Phoebe. He's in trouble, but he does it beautifully. That's Matthew Phoebe into half forward. And the D's are steadier now as required by David Schwartz. Yeah, he could second. kick water. Oh, he could kick it from there. Oh, he's going short. Well, I suppose it was on. Kicked 104 goals in his career. Schwartz coming in too, but Steins takes front position. No one got the hit out. Oh, Broderick, good play by Paul Broderick. Weaves his way through that packet. 
brings it towards Brendan Gale. Yes. No, he's got backup support. Hand pass to Rogers. Rogers breaks the tackle. Races in the goal for a brilliant goal. Tigers in front. Melbourne by four points. Pike was playing at full forward, sorry. In the Tigers' attacking zone, they've got the opportunity again. Knight, short little pass. In the world's half forward, but no mark taken. Rhodes gets a hurried kick. Now Straight he's back to Knight. Favoured foot. Long kick for goal. This for the lead for the Tigers. And they've got it. In a seesawing affair, Richmond held the Demons goalless in the last quarter to emerge winners by 16 points. Can anyone take a mark? Who's going to do the roving? Will it be socked up the ground by Rogers? What? For the first time since 1986, Richmond had strung together three on the trot. First-year player Matthew Rogers was inspirational. He finished with three. I didn't know much about Rogers before he came over, but um, he certainly came on quickly and and really look like a senior player, you know, from day one, really. And, uh, you know, he's very quick and very athletic and fairly strong. And just, you know, the right mental approach. He, he doesn't like being beaten and he's, he's willing to listen and learn and do the right things. And um, he was, you know, very important to us all year. It's quite balmy here, 16 degrees. It's been very cold winter so far in Adelaide and also Melbourne. McDermott's quick kick. Chance for Liptak, he really should kick this. He does. It's an ominous start. It's just what the Tigers did not want with the Bruins behind them. Round 15 saw the Tigers set with one of football's toughest tasks, the Adelaide Crows at Football Park, in front of 43,000 screaming fans. That wide is Pittman. Look at him, way up on centre wing. Wins at the half-way of the mark taken by Rusciuto. Where's Modra? He's ducking back. And Turner, Mudra, a back miss it, oh, it's a goal! Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Got to move it quickly. Richardson on the lead. Out wide is Nash, thumped away from him. Here's a chance for the Tigers. Around the corner, in the wards. Rogers, a good mark. Normally a fairly accurate kick. Set shot. The Tigers need it. And that is a goal. Mudra, handball good. Brown, back to the lead. Free kick play on call. Rusciuto attacks it. Still play on. Handle a beauty to Maynard. Left foot for goal. Rollers it through. Determined to keep their winning streak running, Richmond set about turning a 17 point half time deficit into a nine point advantage after adding six goals in the third quarter. Here's Maxfield onto the left foot, hooking it back in front of goal. And there he is again, little Chris Nash. He's a good little forward pocket rover. Well, this is a big start to Richmond if he kicks this to start the third term. This will be his third. He's directly in front. Chris Nash, and he's put it through. Richardson, outside uh, 50, goes short. Good kick for the first time in the match. It's a good kick. He's got it. Tigers in front. What a turnaround. Three goals in five minutes. Stayed in the air a long time. Brown's little give to Anderson. Pays his way through the centre. Goes to centre half forward. Smart! A beauty! It's Daffy. Knights held on to play on. Still with Knights. Left hand handball. Dropped by Daffy. Handball by Broderick. Free to go for goal. From 40 metres out. Great kick. It's a goal! Scores a level again. Good mark too easy in the end because uh, Maxfield caught underneath the world played hard goes to Maynard Maynard to Rusciuto excellent kick Modra should take off Rusciuto will give him a chance goes to Modra now Modra one out free kick against Turner bombs it in long Gale sets himself well done again by Pittman who's raving Maxwell on the left foot Maxfield goes for goal and might have kicked it he has got it up by calling the advantage here comes Maxfield with his booming long left foot kick. Richardson, a brilliant mark, the youngster. He's coming back in the form, and that's good play to get on with it and kick it in long in towards the square. Murphy back with the final, is it a goal? A booming kick, Richardson. A goal! Matthew Cruiser, way 
out on half forward. A vital passage of play coming up. Up towards Modra. Modra at the back. Here's a ball coming up to the shooter. In another close encounter, the midfield of Broderick, Bond, Knights and Maxfield combined to supply quality disposal to Brendan Gale across half-forward and Matthew Richardson, who finished with four goals. Richmond made it four in a row, accounting for the Crows by just seven points. Moving into the eight for the first time since round seven. In front of the Richmond goal. Oh, it's a mark. It's a mark to deal. This could be the ceiling. Well, a chance to make it three straight kicks they'll have to get from directly in front. Mark Neal's put it through for a goal. You know, I remember during the, the week prior that um, Kevin Morris sat down, we went through the statistics and we knew that Adelaide normally fell away in the third quarter. And we were within striking distance, and I think, you know, that just helped us along a bit. And um, that was definitely in the players' minds, and we were talking about that at half time. And we came out after half time and played very, very well and, and won the game. And I can tell you the players were exceptionally excited after that game. They really were, you know, to travel away, to win against Adelaide, and to um, go back to Melbourne knowing that you'd won more games than you've lost. You know, it's a fantastic effort. Pressure by both defences, fantastic. Past Cameron came the hand pass from West. Look at the work. As Freeze kick goes across the face of goal. The bounce doesn't favour Richmond. The dogs have the numbers, but they're caught. Fryer holding the ball. But the umpire says no, go on with it. Richardson may get a chance. He's got a teammate there in there. Wobbles it into goal, and there's the first one for the Tigers. Following a two-point defeat at the hands of Footscray in the opening round of the season, Richmond went into the return clash at the MCG, not only keen to atone for that slender loss, motivated to keep riding the winning wave the club had enjoyed over the past month. Crop way out at half, but that's good play to get on with it and bring it in towards Grigich. Grigich at the back of the flyer, couple of bites. West, handball, call it up for his second. Oh, he's kicked this. Taken by Bauer. He's very, very quick. As he Nathan Bauer towards the half forward line. Over the back is Neil. That was good play. He sprints clear, kicks it long. Richardson in top position. And oh, oh. Goal. Hits it. He's accidental kicked it. Accidental goal. Accidental goal. This, he dropped the mark. It hit his boot and it's rolled through for a goal. Gale is there. Gets the hand pass away towards Bauer. The Tigers are on the prowl. Bauer's kick in towards Maxfield at half forward and he takes the mark. This may go straight oh, to the line. Oh, no, Gale's in front again. Not paid. Free gets clear, and he pumps it high and long towards full forward. It bounces through for a goal! Into it at the back is Bond. Away he goes. Got a bit of room now, but he elects to take the kick, and it's effective as he finds Neil on the lead again. Suddenly, things going with the Tigers. Neil plays on from 60 metres. He kicks it high. of the year for Nash. Can he finish it off? He can. And Richmond kick clear. Gale around the corner. It was smothered off the boot. Umpire called play on. Desperation stakes at half forward for the Tigers. Here's Knight. Gives it to Deer. Greg Deer from 30 metres. Oh, the big weapon's gone. <laughs> he wants to give it to Cameron. He does. Beveridge is in trouble. Cameron heads for home with a long kick towards Wine, and he takes the mark. Cries for him to get it into the middle. He's a left footer as he gets it back again. In towards Richardson. Yes! Well, it will be. There's 11 points if they could go in with a 17-point margin. It's just going to make it that much tougher for Footscray in the second half. But he's got to kick it. 25 metres out, 45 degree angle, he has kicked it. Slightly off the side of the boot, in towards the centre it goes. The attempted mark was by Matthew Croft, but he couldn't get it cleanly. Knights didn't get a favourable bounce, but he's still got his runners surging it down to half forward. Gale is the policeman, he gives it wide to Bauer. Bauer kicks towards goal, he makes no mistake. The kick from Hawkins, he's normally a good kick, will it clear the pack? 
It won't. It was, no, it's still in play, in fact, is it? Or did it clear the line? No, still called play on by oh. the umpire. All the players stopped. Stop. Now we see a step of goal by Osmond. I reckon they all stopped and Yes, a goal. Pissed it on. Here's a chance for Connor. He races into an open goal. Can he kick his third? He sprints under the left foot and slams it through. Three goals to the half full. 53 metres out. A drop punt that's high into the square. Waiting down Murphy. He's done it. They want a mark. They want a goal so desperately. And they may just get it here. Back towards Osmond, but it eludes him. Campbell's kick is short. It goes straight to Hunter. 46 metres out. Hunter's kick is goal. The dogs are back in it. Richmond led at every change but were aided by some very inaccurate kicking by the Bulldogs. They finished the match kicking 12-22 to 14-13. Richmond making it five in a row, avenging for that one kick round one loss by just three points. Brendan Gale again displayed the form that had thrust him under the watchful eye of opposition coaches, picking up 25 possessions and pulling down 12 marks, while Matthew Richardson was again the major contributor up forward with four. This to make it two goals the difference. And he does. Here's the dangerous Cameron. Look at him. Dodging and weaving. Here's a chance. Racing in is Rowan Smith. He bobs it in long. Great goal. The Bulldogs six points beyond. Now it's turned over. Campbell. Here come the Tigers. Up to half board. No one home. Richardson over the top. Murphy. Back to Richardson. In towards goal. Bound a goal to Maxfield. I think that, you know, Matthew Richardson just got to be let handled by his coach and grow up in his own way and just do enormous work like Dunstall did on his kicking uh, to get to the top. And I don't think there's any doubt that he's got the potential to be an outstanding... Uh, I mean, you've never seen a better era of centre-half forwards all in the one year as in 1994. If you look at, you know, Kerry, Swartz, uh, Hurd, uh, um, Brendan Gale, Taylor, you can just keep going on naming him. I mean, it's an un unusual crop, and he's he's fit into that outstanding group. Burke with the left knee protected, and Deer doing battle. It's Broderick who gets it away, taken with a high kick by Chris Bond. The Tigers go down towards uh, Brendan Gale at half forward. Gale cleverly to Maxfield. Maxfield into the open goal for the Tigers, and there's the first one for the day. Round 17 saw the Tigers head north to meet the Brisbane Bears at the Gabba. A hurdle that had tripped Collingwood, Essendon and North Melbourne in previous rounds. Now being tested with McLean across half-back, giving away ground to Buse. It's socket out of his hands towards Richardson, who's just 25 out. Richardson has a snap over the top and bounces it through. Now it used the body, then decided to leave it for Lees. Got a bit of time on centre wing, gets around Burke easily, but doesn't make the most of the kick. Pushing it up towards half -forward. They've got the numbers, though. Bauer picks it up and pumps it high directly towards Richardson. Out in front and a good one. Grab mark is taken. Gone for Richmond. Runs right up towards centre-half forward, then lobs it high at the back. Another good mark taken by Matthew Richardson over the top of Champion. And he plays on. The goal square is unattended. It's a goal. Another goal to Matthew Richardson. He's inside with a hand pass to Scott. Chris Scott. Kicks towards half forward, towards the 50 metre line, and Leach quickly out of the blocks takes the mark. Waste no time as he spirals one up towards full forward, and that was better with Voss taking the mark. There was only a kick in it at the main change before the Tigers added six goals in the third quarter to set up a comfortable 25 point break heading into the last term. Maxfield and Gale are both there, picked up by Stewie Maxfield, kicks back towards half forward the Tigers have Broderick on the loose there and he goes with a long left foot kick in towards goal an excellent kick by Broderick to goal here's an opportunity now for Bond sweeping hand pass over his head Maxfield tackle but the ball spills again for Bond gets it to Brendan Gale Brendan Gale shoots towards goal and great finishing work by the big man it's a goal he plays on now, kicks up towards half forward. At the back, an opportunity. Oh, here's Hamilton. Takes the hand pass. 40 metres out, Shane Hamilton shoots for goal and puts it through. Boundary throw in in the half forward area there for Richmond. McAdam dragged down. It's Nash with the football. 
Nice shot for goal. It looks pretty good. It's a goal. With a, a right-handed spoil. He's uh, wearing that left arm like a wing at the moment. McAdam does it beautifully, Gilbert. Oh, and brilliant goal. goal. Oh. Look at it. But the Bears weren't done with. They added the first four goals. And looked to be handling the tropical conditions better than the young Tigers. Lynch, Lynch off the right foot. And Lynch's goal. And he's still got that crook shoulder. Anyone's game, Robbo. Anyone's game at the moment. Well yeah. done. Yep. That was Clark. Troy Clark, who got the hand pass out down towards half forward. Now an opportunity for Voss, who picks it up. He's at half forward, puts them inside 50, oh. and the pass is good. The mark is good. And Lynch, he can be a match winner here tonight. This for number five, and the lead from 42 metres. The drop puck, he's dropped. They want to win the game. You've got to take a few cup, a few, few punts. Well done, Burke. Here's a hand pass on. Lambert to Troy Clark. It's going to come down towards Merritt Territory now. Floats in towards half forward. It's Campbell Beat takes twice. it. Twice. Uh, Scott by Campbell. Excellent mark. And he finds Daffy, who's away in the middle. Oh. This looks promising for the Tigers. Richardson on the lead. Nothing champion could do there. This for the lead. They trail by Seven metres to high right. drop punt. It looks pretty good. He's kept it all for the Tigers. Bing kicks in the Richardson direction. It's got good penetration. Richardson can't take the mark. The ball rebounds for Knights. Knights. Oh, what a beautiful kick by Knights. It's a goal. Matthew Knights displayed some much-needed experience to steady the side. While Matthew Richardson was best afield with five. As Richmond made it six in a row for the first time since 1980. very lucky too because we copped you know north with Kerry out and things like that but that over a 20 odd week season happens week in and, and, and previous years we still hadn't been able to come up uh, and uh, that's where I think uh, Tony and John and Kevin Morris and Peter Swab and these guys did a terrific Francis Burke did a terrific job in not only did they galvanize the players together not only did they have a style of play but they had a terrific spirit um, because a lot of the games in that period, we're in a situation that you could have as easily lost them as you did win them. Mm. I mean, often those games came down to the last quarter or the last 15 minutes or the last five minutes where, you know, one side or the other has to stand up and be counted and really try and put a lot of pressure on and do the right things. And, and fortunately enough for us, it was, it was Richmond that was doing those things. And, and it did come back to the spirit and, you know, how close we were and, and what we wanted to achieve. And, and that was a major part of, you know, the success this year, I think. Bullis towards half forward. Gale is there with Jakovic. Oh! Umpire collected by a running player. Meantime, free finds Richardson after the Gale mark. Sitting in fifth position on the ladder, the Tigers headed across the Nullarbor to meet the West Coast Eagles. He sat a game clear ahead of Carlton at the top of the table. Time five marks for Gale. Wants to go on. Not much percentage in that, but a high kick inside the 50. This is Nash in front of the pack. Maxfield, a natural left footer, drops it quickly on the boots and puts it through for a goal. Capacity crowd crammed into an under renovation Subiaco oval to see the Eagles stop Richmond's six game winning streak and record the club's 10th win in a row against the Tigers. After a promising start, the Tigers battled through to half time where they trailed by just 11 points. Over the top to affect the spoil. Nash gets a hurry, kick down towards full forward. McIntosh chanced his arm, and Richardson will probably make him pay. It's a lone pike to go and get a few possessions of his own as Hines kicks it high towards the wing. Hasn't that kept off a great day? But the Eagles kicked away through Peter Simic, who finished the match with six. Despite the grit and desperation of Duncan Kellaway in defence, it was West Coast by 48 points. I mean, it's a tough task, I think, going over to Western Australia and, and playing the Eagles, especially over there. And uh, I mean, that's all we can really do from the two games, isn't it? Learn from it. Really, they, they were a better side on both occasions. See, the other thing too, if you're picking a Victorian state side, how many 
Richmond players would you had in it? If you picked the West Australian state side, you'd have 14, 17 Eagles players in that side. Now, I know there's uh, four times the population in three and a half, or whatever, in Melbourne, in Victoria to West Australia, but you're talking, uh, you know, a, a complete different unit. We're still gro we were still growing at this stage and still are. Winning towards the middle. Maxfield a chance to pick it up for the Tigers. He pumps it long. Down towards Richardson at full forward. No mark taken. Rogers a snap for goal. The Tigers are away. Following a month and a half of success, the second convincing Eagles loss for the season left a bitter taste in the youthful Tiger combination's mouths. And they weren't about to let Sydney do likewise. Here's a snap at goal. That looks pretty good. And it was out of bounds anyway. Well, here's a check side. He bends it back Good kick. pretty well, and a goal. Looks like a drowned rat as he kicks to hard forward. Out comes Richardson, rushes it in. Around his body, he wobbles it over the line for his third goal. Nice. Outside 50. The lead of Richardson ignored. Centering kick, Gale comes steaming across. Beautiful lead here from Brendan Gale, and well done. Brendan Gale. He's kicked 21 goals and 18 behinds this season. From 46 metres, he's put that straight through the middle. Finds Gale, up he goes tonight. Danger here, Maxfield, through the middle. You should go, Stuart. Deer goes straight down the middle. No mark taken. Working hard was Bond. Broderick off the ground has given it to Richardson. And Gracie, you can say goodbye to the folks. Richmond led at every change to record a comfortable 33-point victory. The controversial Dermot Brereton finished his season, and the AFL Tribunal dealt him a seven-match suspension after an incident resulting in a broken jaw to skipper Tony Free. and no mistake. Terrific play by the Tigers. I remember... Um, coming across from um, around the centre of the ground there somewhere and I remember Michael Gale having the ball and being being pursued by Dermy probably 15 metres behind or something. I probably didn't think Dermy would catch him because Michael's fairly quick. But, um, you know, I was going to run over and shepherd anyway. I thought that's probably the right thing to do and that's what was expected of me. Uh, I remember Michael kicking the ball and realising that, you know, there wasn't any need for that big mad rush over there and a big bump, which I was going to do. and. Um, and pretty much pulled out of contact. But um, what happened thereafter was fairly interesting. There was contact, and, um, and that was the ball game, really. I won't probably go into it too much further than that. Richmond went into their round 20 clash with St Kilda at the MCG in fourth spot on the ladder. A game clear of eventual finalists, Melbourne, Footscray, Hawthorne and Geelong. and Kilda started well with Tony Lockett on target, setting up a three-goal break at the first change. Lockett finished with six, but it wasn't enough as the Tigers recovered to win by a comfortable 32 points. Wayne Campbell was inspirational through the midfield, finishing with three goals, as did Chris Nash. But Matthew Knights and Paul Broderick were Richmond's best, both amassing over 25 possessions. With just four games remaining, the general perception was that Richmond needed to win two of the last four matches of the season to clinch a spot in the final eight. <laughs> Round 21 saw Richmond, fourth on the ladder, play host to seventh-placed Hawthorne in front of 52,000 at the MCG. <laughs> Dunstall and Hudson were both on target in the first half as Hawthorne strolled to a 27-point advantage by half-time. <laughs> Richmond battled on, creating fine opportunities through the midfield, but failed to make any headway due to inaccuracies. Wayne Herneman, the worst offender, with two goals five. The Hawks victorious by 28 points. I mean, you've got to hand it to Hawthorne. They just, although we might have had the ball a little bit more, you know, in the second half and pushed it forward a little bit more, they were just far more efficient. You know, they, they moved the ball forward very efficiently, got it to Dunstall, and, um, you know, and he normally kicks goals, and we weren't doing that. We were sort of 
scragging our way up to the forward line, missing opportunities, and um, the ball was getting swept out fairly easily. He so continued to be boring, didn't he, Dunstall? He did. Mark, lead kick mark, kick goal. Yeah, <laughs> shocking. But that, I agree with Tony. That was the day, most probably, that the game that everybody was disappointed with because even in the way we played, we had expected to have won. I think there was nine goals missed within a 45 mm. kind of yard mm. radius. And I think that was a frustrating, knowing that we had these other really tough uh, games to come, but that was the one that could have been, that you know, well, that might have been the one that we let get away. It went to Madden that time, they dig it out of this centre, Daffy boots it down to half forward, Rogers across to Richardson, what a start for both clubs. Blues lead by four points, into a breeze, opportunity now for Richardson. 60 metres out, Richardson, the kick not particularly good, it wobbles down, it bounces through. Following a 10-goal drubbing of Fitzroy in round 22, Richmond sitting in fifth place needed to win one of the remaining two matches to secure a slice of the September action. Second place Carlton were the opponents and Optus Oval the venue. Carlton took control from the start with an eight-goal first turn and never looked back. Handing out a 113-point thrashing. It's over the top to Mitchell. Quick hands, good to feed his. Oh, oh meters in the clear. Gleason runs into an open goal. Another one. Fraser Brown booted seven for Carlton, while for Richmond, Richardson finished with four of Richmond six. On top of the demoralising loss, Brendan Gale's fine season was over when he sustained a jaw injury. Inside 50, this should be a goal. He kicks from 42 metres and he kicks a goal. I don't think, which is beaten by a far better side. There's no, on, on that particular day, uh, they came off the, the, the blitzing they gave the Eagles a week before and uh, they had all the confidence and arrogance and uh, uh, that a good side that had, you know, and also they were at that stage on top of the uh, AFL season. So I don't think anything happened other than they uh, jumped us, they kicked about eight goals into a, strong, uh, into a strong breeze and then it was very, very hard to get back into the game. Murphy is there once more. Ball pushed towards Bond. A high hurry kick. This is going to be close. It's a goal. If Richmond could defeat Geelong at Optus Oval in the final round of the home and away season, the dream of a finals berth would become reality. Tony Free again showed courage, this time to return to the side after breaking his jaw just 27 days earlier. Here's Murphy. Murphy onto his right foot. He must kick this. A lovely kick by Murphy to goal. Geelong started well in the first term, kicking seven. And with Billy Brownless kicking eight goals from as many kicks, the Cats ran away to a 77-point win. They don't come any quicker replies than that. Hopes of any finals action were shattered when Melbourne defeated Sydney to secure a final eight position. Couch at the bottom. Couldn't take it cleanly. Tigers, if they can get a couple more, they've got seven and a half minutes. Knights, good looking kick, there's one. Hinkley has taken the kick in. He goes short, but it's touched off the boot. Steve Hocking caught. Richmond a chance here, Matthew Knights. He won't miss this. It's a goal to the Tigers. Steve Hocking's caught. Again, the Richmond fans appeal for the free kick, but it's Matthew Richardson to gather the football. Kicks across his body. It's punched away. Daffy, can he score? Daffy can score a goal! Magnificent oh, kick by Nick Daffy! I think the, the immediate reaction was probably one of disappointment. I mean, amongst the players and, and the coaching staff that, right, we'd, you know, we'd missed out. We had to rely on, on Sydney beating Melbourne the next day if we had any chance of slipping in. So the immediate reaction, I think, was disappointment. And that was, that was the emotion, I think, for that evening. But when you like sitting here now and when you look back and reflect and, and be logical about the whole thing and imagine if you were sort of setting goals at the start of the year then then I think the club would be fairly satisfied realizing that still you know a lot you know that we can do a lot better and there's a lot more you know a lot more goals that we can achieve but um, yeah I think general satisfaction would be a fair enough word. Yeah, the one thing you've got to remember Matthew he still finished ninth so that means that eight other sides are still ahead of us and I think, uh, you know, maybe it might be a good thing 
that we didn't make the eight because maybe we might have uh, thought we'd half got there. Um, I know that's a, a hard thing to say, but in, in, the, in one year we've come a long way. But I think, and I'd be interested to hear Tony's point, I think we've got to go nearly as far a game if we want to beat and play off in a grand final like Geelong and, uh, uh, and the Eagles did. I think we've got a fair way to go in that area from, in all aspects of our club. I think so, and especially when you look at the last two games where we, you know, we didn't perform up to scratch and we certainly didn't look like finals contenders in those two games. But I mean, you know, I agree with Mel to a certain extent. It would have been great to, to slip into the finals and get a bit of experience, especially for any player actually, because we haven't played in the finals for, you know, since any of the players have been around at the club. So I mean, it was experience for everyone. But um, there's certainly a great appetite there going into next season, and I'm sure that you know, the boys are looking at that and they know they've got to improve and collectively, you know, we, we all do. And um, we'll be putting in a huge pre-season and um, we certainly have got a taste of what's required to make finals football and, you know, and to be a valuable contributor in that. I mean, when I look back, I mean, it's all hypothetical, I mean, in a few years' time, but when I look back, you know, from a playing perspective and from a team perspective, I'd like to think that 94 was the turning point. It was the year that we obtained a group of players who were very professional, very serious about what they were doing, plenty of hunger, and you know, and a group of players that would go on and play in finals and ultimately win a premiership. I think that's, you know, if if I could look at an ideal situation, that's that's what it would be. And I think '94 has certainly promised a plenty. Australian Football Video presents Vintage Football from the Seven Sport Classics Collection. Seven's Magic Moments and the Sensational 70s. Football action to get your blood boiling. In Seven's Magic Moments, thrill to 30 minutes of unrivaled football history. From the brilliance of Baldock to the antics of Jacko. And the Sensational 70s. Highlights from one of Aussie Rule's finest decades. Magic Moments and Sensational 70s. Two magnificent Seven Sport Classics from Australian Football Video.